Good. Can I hear a good morning? good morning? All right. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you all for, you know, being true Houstonians, not listening to the weather report, and you know, just just being here this morning for this very important event. Uh, my name is Sarah Kellner. I'm the director of Civic Art and Design for Houston Arts Alliance, and you know, today we're going to be talking about the request for qualifications that we have for uh, United Airlines. So uh, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through, I'm gonna go through this presentation, you know, kind of at a nice clip, but to make sure that you get all of the information you need. And then at the end, we're definitely gonna allow time for questions. And then just to reassure you all, you will also be able to ask questions by email and we have two more information sessions this week, and I'll have the dates up on the screen later in the presentation. So if you know if you're here today and you don't feel you got everything you needed, you can come. You can come again. Okay. So um, again, this is a request for qualifications for um, new artworks at Terminal C North at uh, the United Airlines Terminal at Intercontinental Airport. So uh, Bush Intercontinental Airport. So um, I think many of you know about Houston Arts Alliance. Actually, quick question. How many artists do we have in the audience? Okay, awesome. And how many of you have applied for projects with civic art and design before? Okay, smaller handful. And how many of you have applied for grants at Houston Arts Alliance? Okay, terrific. Well, this is great. You know, Houston Arts Alliance, you know, we're the city's uh, local arts and culture agency. And so uh, we have two primary functions through contracts with the city of Houston. We provide, uh, grant, we provide grants to artists and we also provide civic art services. So um, this particular project that we're doing, we're actually working in partnership with United Airlines. Uh, United Airlines has contracted the Houston Arts Alliance to uh, manage this project, to provide artist selection services, and to, uh, to contract the artists and really um, oversee the project from, from now until all of the artwork is installed later in the fall. So uh, this this work we our our primary work that we do is with the city of Houston. So there are over uh, 650 works of art in the city of Houston art collection, and they're seen by over 64 million people a year. Um, many of those people it's from people who travel through Bush Intercontinental and Hobby Airport. So the artwork in the City of Houston Art Collection, particularly the artworks at the airport, are highly, highly visible. Um, I wanna thank my friend Kathleen Boyd here who works in the marketing department at uh, Houston Airport System for just reminding me that uh, the Houston Airport System has a wonderful website where you all can go online and take a look at the artworks that are already at the airport. So um, it's www.fly2houston.com backslash IAH backslash art. And there's also a map where you can look at where each artwork is located, www.fly2houston.com backslash IAH backslash maps. We're gonna have this presentation online starting, um, I think we should have it up about Monday. So, you know, don't, don't worry yourself about scribbling down URLs. We'll have everything posted online for you, you know, by Monday. Um, so the, the, the company that we're working for is uh, United Airlines. We're very excited to have this opportunity to work with, um, you know, such an, impo such an important airline and such an important airline for Houston. Um, Houston is one of United's hubs, and they've really done an extraordinary job building this building this new terminal and building in spaces that are going to be wonderful locations for works for works of art. Um, so this here, this is you know what United Airlines says about themselves. And for you all as artists, I think it's important to remember is that you know this is this is the vision of United Airlines that we're trying to fulfill in terms of the artwork for the terminal. So um, this, 
like I said, this project is being managed through an agreement between United Airlines and Houston Arts Alliance. So we're looking for artists in the greater Houston area to submit qualifications for artworks at United Terminal C North at George Bush Intercontinental Airport. Um, and the new artwork will be very prominently featured in this particular terminal. Um, some people have asked for a definition of the greater, the greater Houston area. Um, you know, I would say if you're, you know, if you're within the ten, within the ten county region, um, I've already had a couple of calls, people asking if Dallas and Austin count as the greater Houston area, <laughs> and I told them not yet. We're growing, but we haven't quite grown that much. So there's, there's two things that we're seeking, and I want to reassure you, absolutely everything on the slides up here is in the request for qualifications handout that you should have picked up at the door, and that's also available online. So there's two, there's two possibilities for you as artists in your application. One is we're, se we're seeking, we're open to the possibility of existing artworks and various media and scales suitable to the locations listed in this request for qualifications and acquisitions. You know, we're also looking for artists to commission works designed specifically for the identified locations. So we're actually open to both opportunities. The, um, in the work that the Houston Arts Alliance has done with the Houston airport system, uh, we've worked with them on many open calls We've, we've, opened, we've had opportunities where artists could submit just for work to be purchased or commissioned. Um, for this project, it seemed to make the most sense to, at the beginning, make both opportunities a possibility for the applying artists. So uh, we have 15 possible locations. I'm going to show you a sample of those locations in the slide presentation today, and all of the locations are available on the Houston Arts Alliance website in the public art section. Uh, also online, we have a site plan available, you know, where you can see a map of the terminal. So we encourage you as artists to think creatively about these locations. You know, I encourage you, take a look at the artwork that's at the airport right now and think about how your work or your strategy could help could fit into and help expand on the vision for artwork at the airport, you know, which is seen by many, many millions of visitors per year. One thing that's important, to, uh, an important point to know is all artworks must be movable. Um, I already had a question emailed into me from somebody who does painted tile and wanted to affix that directly to the wall. You know, th that, that we can't do. It's, you know, in my last four years of Houston Arts Alliance, I've learned an awful lot about airports. And one thing I've learned about airports is that they're always changing. They're always changing. Things are always getting upgraded. Things are always evolving to keep increasing uh, customer satisfaction and to allow capacity for all the passengers. So all works of art must be able to be movable. So for example, if you're an artist who works in mosaic, which is typically a material that would go directly on the wall, propose having it in a series of panels that would be hung on the wall and then that, that could be moved. So I'm going to show you a sample of the available locations. This isn't, this isn't all of them, but I just wanted to give you a flavor for the kinds of spaces, for the kinds of spaces that are available. So this is the one location we have available for a sculpture. Um, so this is a, a large curtain wall at the, at the kind of the end, end of the terminal. Um, everything that you see, uh, tech booth, my screen, my screen just went out. Is there anything I need to do to get to bring that back? Sorry, this is like this is like just the most gorgeous technical setup here, and it's like there's an iPad in front of me, where I get to look and see what slide I'm on now and what slide is next, and our let's all 
let's all give a big hand for the tech director for today. Okay. Okay. Slight technical, slight technical change. So uh, what you see, what you see in the middle of the slide, the band, you know, the, the flags hanging on the hanging on the, the glass and the banners underneath, that's a temporary display. So this is actually a wide open space where we're considering a sculpture. Um, you know, what we're considering is a sculpture that would be on the floor. We're not considering a suspended work for this location, um, just due to the due to the nature of the location. Uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, you all need to think of as uh, temporary artists, particularly for those of you who, you know, go through to the final round for this project, um, everything that you make needs to fit in the freight elevator. So, you know, this, there are a number of very unglamorous parts of public art where, you know, as we go, for those of you who are selected as we go through the project, you know, the civic art staff and the people from the Houston airport system, we're gonna really support you in thinking through, you know, all of those kind all of those kinds of details. Whoops. Uh, we have several locations, uh, locations, you know, very beautiful locations that are above the uh, charging stations throughout the airport. So um, this is a this is a wall this is a wall where you know both walls on either side of the corner are um, are available, um, and then some of the things that you want to note is not only the location of the artwork but what's around the artwork. So for example, here there's a there's a television monitor right there. So um, airports are very bu busy, active environments. So as you're, as you're thinking about artwork for the airport, you know, you wanna think that it's gonna be in a very busy, active environment with, you know, a lot of other things going on, you know, video monitors, uh, signage, et cetera. Uh, we have a number of different locations like this where, um, so the walls here you see are uh, tiled up to about uh, shoulder height, and then there's a work above. What we did, for the benefit of all of you as artists, we went through and considered, you know, every single possible location. Um, so, you know, you may, you may look at one location and think, mm, you know, that's, you know, that's really not for me. Fine, focus your attention on a location that you think most, most suits you. Um, here's another uh, location above the charging table and work area. Uh, one thing that I don't have right now in this slide uh, presentation is uh, wall dimensions. So we're gonna be adding that this week. So, you know, as you're all think, particularly those of you who are thinking about applying with existing works available for, pur available for purchase, uh, you know, we'll be adding the dimensions so that you can think, okay, I have a painting that would look absolutely fantastic on this wall, but will it fit? So we'll have that available for you. Um, and that here's another area. It's a, the the image is a little dark, but it's uh, this area right here, uh, the inset area above the uh, charging stations. And here's an example of another area above the charging station. So I'm going to talk about uh, some of the you know some of the things that we're looking for. Again, all of this is in the full request for qualifications. And what I have up here on the slide are, you know, it's not like um, there's a full description of what we mean by, for example, artistic quality in the request for qualifications. So there's four primarily, primary evaluation criteria. Certainly artistic quality. You know, we want world-class art for, uh, you know, our world-class airport. Um, you know, responsiveness. This is, public art is not like having a gallery exhibition and just going and, you know, hanging your work and walking away. There's an awful lot of collaboration that's gonna happen between you with the staff of Houston Arts Alliance and the airport. So, you know, we're looking to see, you know, is this artist someone who's gonna be, is gonna be responsive, that's gonna, you know, be able to meet with us, that will, 
you know, um, you know, be be able to really think about how to make their work, their artwork work for the work for the terminal. Again, there's a full definition of what we call responsiveness in your package. Uh, demonstrated technical ability. So this, of course, is as per your particular discipline. Um, if you're a mosaic art, if you're a mosaic artist who's proposing a mosaic on panels, we want to see that you've done that before. Um, if you're a sculptor, we want to know that you have experience as a sculptor. Um, if you have experience in public art and airports, we definitely, we definitely want to know about that. And then also uh, project management ability. Um, each artist for this project will be under contract with Houston Arts Alliance. And uh, you know we will we will need to know that an, an artist is able to you know really effectively manage the process of you know building a new, building a new work of art, doing so you know on schedule, under budget, and following all of the terms of the contract. So you know I invite you to please read the evaluation criteria before before you apply. And you know, if you have any questions, I'll be putting up the I'll be putting up the email address for you to ask questions. So there's a number uh, there's a number of project requirements that um, are non-negotiable that are listed. There's there's very few non-negotiables, but the few that there are, I wanted to let you know about. Uh, you know, one all artists will have a contract with the Houston with the Houston Arts Alliance. Um, all artists will be required to sign a VERA waiver. Um, we, will, we will be asking you to waive your rights under the Visual Arts Act of 1990. Um, if you don't know what that is, uh, you know, uh, look, look up VERA rights on uh, Wikipedia. And then finally, um, we really encourage, if, if any of you out there are registered with the City of Houston, as a small as a small business, as a minority-owned business, as a woman-owned business, um, then we really encourage you to apply. If what I just said doesn't make any sense whatsoever, don't worry about it. We're not actually. We're, we're, this is not a pitch for you all to run out and become City of Houston certified certified small businesses. It's not a requirement for this project. But um, our client is committed to reaching, reaching out to, connecting with, and contracting uh, small businesses in the city of Houston. So uh, we have a number of application requirements. So first and foremost is uh, the resume. Um, I think in the application requirements it says no more than no more than three pages. Um, I've gotten a couple of questions about resumes. Uh, what we want is your artistic resume uh, you know some people some some people occasionally send their their work resume that's actually not what we're looking for you know we're looking for the resume that shows us who you are as an artist we're also asking for a letter of intent in the letter since so a rec let me take a take a quick step back at this point we're only asking you to show us examples of your work you know, show us who you are. Show us who you are as an artist. Show us examples of your past work. Show us examples of work available for, available for purchase. We're, we're not asking you to spend a lot of time and come up with ideas and, you know, send us, you know, mock-ups for potential, potential works. That's actually not what we're, that's actually not what we're doing right now. You know, what we're asking for is for you to introduce yourself to us as artists. And you know, besides the resume, one of the ways you get to do that is with the letter of intent. The letter of intent is a golden opportunity for you to talk about yourself, talk about your work, talk about how you, know, you will fulfill the goals and the vision of the project. You know, this is where you can talk about how you're going to accomplish, you know, accomplish the evaluation criteria. You know, you know why your work. You know, examples of how you're a really responsive artist and a great project manager, and that you make high quality work, and that you've done projects where you've had to finish on on time and on budget. So, um, one thing I always suggest to people is, 
you know, have, a, have an, um, an artist friend or even better, a non-artist friend look at your application materials before you send it in, especially the letter of intent because that's like your personal message to the panelists who will be adjudicating this. You know, that's your one-on-one that's your -on -one communication with them saying, you know, hey, here are all the reasons besides my fabulous work why I should be chosen for this project. Uh, then we ask for a biography and artist statement. Um, a couple people have asked me what's the difference between a bio and artist statement and the resume. The difference is, is we want you know, a, a short paragraph that talks about you as an artist and a short paragraph that talks about your work in an artist statement. Uh, the way to think of it is, is, would you be comfortable with having somebody cut it, paste it, and put it in a press release? If you would feel good with that, then your artist statement and bio you know, are rock star. Um, and then an image list for work samples. Um, we do, there are some very specific things that we ask for, you know, some of the obvious ones like the, uh, you know, the, the date of the artwork, the materials. This is where if you're applying for, uh, if you have artworks that you think we would, would be interesting for us for purchase, this is where you list your price, okay? I actually had an artist once apply for a request for acquisitions and he didn't include any prices. And I mean, I was just, you know, I was just like heartbroken. It's like, so we unfortunately couldn't buy any of his work. So I encourage you, you know, really read the application requirements carefully. Read the RFQ over a few times. A, a lot of time and effort has gone into it to try to make it as crystal clear as possible for you all, for you all as artists and applicants. And if there's something we've missed, you know, just email us and we'll get you an answer to your question. Oh, and all of our app, all of the applications are through our online system called uh, called Submittable. Uh, there's a link to that in your application package. Okay, so now I'm talk We're going to just talk about the timeline, and then I'm getting pretty close to the end of my slide presentation. So then I'll be able to start doing you know doing some Q and A with the audience. So we released the request for qualifications on November 9th. Um, and then of course, today is our first artist information session. Um, I really, again, want to do a shout out to uh, Marion Luntz and the M Museum of Fine Arts Houston for allowing us to use this space at the last minute. Houston Arts Alliance literally has only 67 chairs and we realized that when, when we realized there were gonna be more of you than 67, they, you know, jumped up and made the space available for us right away. So we really appreciate that. We have two additional artist information sessions. Please note that your attendance at these sessions is not mandatory. So let's say you have an artist friend who over Christmas says, hey, I just heard about that United Airlines open call. Oh my God, I didn't go to an artist information session. It's not mandatory. This session is for this session is for you to get all of the information you need to put together a successful application. The deadline is Sunday, January sixth, uh, two thousand nineteen. We actually do have a cutoff date for you to email questions of uh, Friday uh, the fourth, and uh, that should be in your application package. Uh, one, thing, one thing I do want to point out is that, you know, this schedule may change. So it won't go faster, but, you know, it, if, it, if it has to, if, if it has to bump off by a week or two, it may do so. And, you know, that may, that may happen without us nece necessarily notif notifying you. So just want to make sure you guys know that. Um, so by Friday, by Friday, January, uh, eight, nine, January 18th, 2019, we anticipate uh, notifying um, everybody who applied for the request for qualifications. For those artists who we want to, pr to present us with proposals, those artists will be given a request for proposals that will have a lot more information uh, we will also pay you a stipend to then develop, you know, to, to develop an idea that, you know, for you to be commissioned to complete for the airport. Um, so the deadline for, at this point, the deadline for the RFP will be February 8th. 
We anticipate having the uh, selection panel by uh, February, uh, February 15th. By February 18th, we'll be presenting the selected artist to United Airlines for approval. United Airlines has final authority on uh, the artists that are selected. And then by Friday, February 22nd, we'll be notifying everybody in writing by HAA. So I do want to let you know, this, you know, it is conceivable this schedule could bump by a week or two. So if the 18th of January arrives and you haven't heard from us, don't worry, we'll be, we'll be getting to you soon. So um, in terms of uh, fabrication and installation for the project, um, we anticipate completing uh, purchase orders and contracting with the artists by March 1st. Um, in the first two weeks of March, we will want all of the uh, selected artists to have a consultation session with staff from Houston Arts Alliance and United Airlines, just so everybody can, everybody can meet each other. Um, you know, we can talk about your proposals, get any last minute, get any last minute feedback. Um, starting in March, um, those artists who are being commissioned will have an opportunity to develop their project further. You know, so you know you, you have a draft design, and then you'll have an some time to go to a final design. Um, we will then provide, you know, you will then submit that to Houston Arts Alliance, and we'll provide you with written written approval of your proposal. Between April and September is fabrication, um, and se September is delivery and installation, and October is completion and project project closeout. Um, so, you know, those artists who are selected, you know, w you'll be working very closely with, you know, myself and Alex and Matt, who are the, the three staff members of the civic art and design team. Our job, you know, once you're under contract is to support you in being, you know, really successful with this project. Um, so I'd like to actually, before we, before we do questions, so just to let you know, here are the dates of the two other information sessions. Uh, we're actually videotaping this session today. So, you know, if you want to go back and look at it again, you know, we'll have that posted next week. Um, and then I just wanted to let you know, when you walked in, there were two requests for qualifications. Uh, we have another open call right now for a project we're doing with Caden USA. Um, we extended that deadline to this Wednesday because we knew that so many artists would be coming to this presentation today and that you might be interested in this other opportunity. So we really invite you to check that out. And then also, uh, since you, you all are artists who may be interested in our grants department, that the next deadline for Let Creativity Happen is Monday, January 28th, 2019. So that's coming up the end of January. You can find more information on our website. Again, this presentation will be going up online as well as the video of the presentation. And it'll be, you know, and if for whatever reason, you know, you come out of here and you're like, oh, I just, I just, I can't find the information I need. I don't remember what was, you know, what Sarah said about, you know, about anything. Just email us and we'll, we'll take care of you. Okay, so this is the question and answer part of the session. So we're going to, uh, uh, if you have, outside of these events, if you have questions, uh, please send them to us by email at civicart at haatx.com. So, uh, and we ask that you submit all questions by email by Thursday, uh, January 3rd at 5 p.m. The deadline for this project is on a Sunday. So, you know, I encourage you, you know, make sure that you're, you know, get into the submittable account, start loading up your work, do it before Thursday, because you don't want to be stuck on a Sunday and, oh my God, there's a problem. And, you know, it's Sunday and there's no one I can call. So, you know, start early. Okay, so I'm ready to, I'm ready to answer your questions and we'll stay, let me, let me just double check the time. I've got, um, I can stay here until, uh, until 1245. So, you know, basically we can exhaust ourselves with, with Q, with Q, with Q, with Q and A. So who has, who has a question? Yes. Oh, actually, excuse me one second. We actually have a microphone. This is all, this is all very fan, this is all very fancy. 
Thank you. The panel that's going to be um, looking over the applications, are we talking to artists? Are we talking to non-artist goers? Um, so that's one question. And the other question is the delivery and installation, um, is that part of our budget or is that a separate budget? So delivery, thank you very much. Delivery and installation will be a part of the, you know, the artist budget budget project. Um, and then the, the panel will be two representatives from United Airlines, one representative from the Houston airport system, and two uh, local, local art experts. So the panel you're speaking with is uh, mixed between arts people and non-arts people. So it's a mix of the, uh, the, the client, the facility, and, and the arts experts. So that's, a good, that's a good thing to keep in mind you know, as you're putting together your application. It's not an all arts crowd you're talking to. Question, question yes, front row. Oh, uh, oh, actually, okay. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna let Al, so Al, everybody say hi to Alex. Since she has the mic, look to her and raise your hand and then I'm gonna Alex I'm gonna let you decide who to go to next since we're trying to run the mic around and I don't want to I don't want to wear you out next question hi there just to ooh, just to clarify um, as this is an RFQ are we we're not supposed to make any sort of like Photoshop mock-up even though they're asking for uh, also completed works that could be purchased as opposed to commissioned works right you know if if you can't if you can't help yourself and want to do a mock-up, you can, but we're not asking for we're not asking for that at this point. All right. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Any questions or comments? Okay. How you doing? Hey there. Uh, for the garage uh, mural panel, um, with. Is uh, fabrication an, uh, an opportunity for artists to have your work installed through fabrication for that, or do you actually have to apply it physically as a mural? So are you talking, um, are you talking about the Caden? No, the uh, United Airlines, uh, I think it was the garage. There's actually, I think you're, you know, there's no, uh, there's no garage artwork for the United Airlines project, I, th I think I think we might have crossed wires. We actually handed out two okay. requests for qualifications: one for United, one for Caden. Okay. Um, if you have questions about the garage, you know, I, so I think you're talking about the garage mural for Caden. Okay. Just come just come talk to me at the end, okay. and I'll answer your question. Okay. Is that thanks. okay? I have two questions. The first one being, is there a diagram of the spaces for our, so we can get an idea of the space for the art? You know, just, w is it a long haul? It, is there a diagram? And the second one, is there a, like a, a budget, like we know how much, like let's say if the budget is per piece of art 2000, then we know that we would not propose something that we it would it would cost five thousand to fabricate you know it would just save right. us time so is there a budget and also is there a diagram so we can see the space and get an idea you know we have a we have a we have a floor plan that we can make available and we also are going to provide uh dimensions of those of those individual spaces to you know to make sure that that you have that information did i did i answer your question Right. So, at, so the total budget for this project is eight hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars. So, what we've done, we've deliberately not divided. We're deliberately not saying X thousand dollars per location. Um, we kind of want to see what comes in. So, this is something that you could do in your in your letter of intent say you, you could talk about your vision for what you would want to propose so for example you'd say you know i propose a piece this big 
for, you know, the charging area in slide number, you know, five or whatever, that would be this big, it would be made of resin and would cost approximately $200,000. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can really use your letter of intent to talk, really talk about your, you know, talk about your vision. Is it? Okay. Hi, my question is concerning on the resume and letter of intent. If our team has like multiple artists that does different things, do each one of us have to put in our resume and you know, like all the um, letter of intent and like, do we have to put in each artist separately or do we apply it as a whole, as like a one group? You have the, uh, everybody has the option of applying either as an individual or as a team. And um, in the request for qualifications, um, it only, it asks that uh, if you're applying as a team, that you provide resumes for each member of your team. You know, other, otherwise, ev otherwise everything else is the same. Did that answer your question? Okay. My question is about light. Yeah. Uh, so how is the lighting in those space? As far as I see on the on the slides, it's not so well lit. So, wh what are you going to do with that? Excellent question. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to introduce my friend uh, Ben Brown from JLA Construction. We're working on this project, so uh, we Ben, we haven't talked about additional lighting. Is there is there is there any possibility for additional lighting or not? I'm going to. Everybody, let's say, let's give a big round of applause for Ben for letting me put him on the spot. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate everybody being here. Um, majority of the location, I, don't, I can't remember where you were. The majority of locations do have down lighting. Um, if, if there's an interest in putting in lighting, that's something we can look at as part of the pricing. Um, but I'd say probably half of the locations do have pretty good down lighting um, that's already installed because most of these locations that, that are being proposed have. They were designed for art pieces um, already. Um, so, but if it, there's not lighting there, we can certainly look to put it in lighting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just note, all of the pictures we took were with, you know, somebody's cell phone. So that w what I just showed you is not exactly professional photography. Okay, but just know that all of those spaces do have down lighting. Um, okay, I see the microphones all the way up there. Hi. Um, I saw under eligibility that the family members of uh, Houston Arts Alliance and United Airlines are ineligible. So if an artist has a sibling that's a flight attendant for United, does that make them ineligible? A sibling that's a flight attendant. Can you do me a favor and email me? Email me that question. My, uh, my, my gut instinct is to say is to say no, but I would like to I would like to double check that to make sure I'm giving you a really accurate answer. Thanks for that question. Appreciate it. Um, quick question: Are all the locations going to be um, shown? on the website or just examples of the location? Yes, on, on the Houston Arts Alliance website is our pictures of all of the locations. Um, I thought I edited it down just for the purposes of time okay. of time today, but yeah. And, and what we'll be, we'll be adding dimensions to that presentation so you can take a look at the sizes we're talking about. Okay. Okay, thank you. Is there an opportunity to actually visit the space so we can see the true color of the tile, the wall, because that could correlate with the art, you know? That Unfortunately, at, at, the, at this point, at the request for qualification stage, we're not going to be able to do escorted, we're not going to be able to do escorted tours. Um, you know, you can't believe what it takes to bring, to, to bring uh, guests into behind security in the airport. Um, however, you know, uh, we will probably, for those who are selected as finalists, 
we will be arranging for you to get a tour behind 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 security. Yeah, at at this point, it's just logistically impossible. Thank you, Sarah. You said that there were 15 locations and a budget of 847,000. Yes. Is, are we to assume that you will be picking something for all locations? No, we're actually we. Um, so our intent in listing all of those locations is to show you everything that is available. I do not anticipate that we will be locating artwork at some of those locations. Uh, for example, there's one uh, one location that we have that's kind of a, a meandering hallway. You know, to be honest, I mean, that could be an interesting location for an artist, and some people may prefer that. But uh, today, I wanted to show everybody kind of the rock star location. So we, do, we, we wanted to give the artist, like, the benefit of all of the information we have, because somebody may have, you know, a fantastic proposal for a location, but I don't, we're not going to put artwork in all of them. We're not going to try to divide 847,000 by 15. That's important. Thank you. Yeah. And, and my second question has to do with uh, any, um, any exclusions that you may be thinking about. I mean, we are artists. We think outside the box. For example, uh, is sound. Is so could sound be part of the? No. Part? Um, that's actually a really good point. Um, Deidre, is Deidre in here? <coughs> Deidre? Uh, Everybody say thank you to Deidre. She's taking notes today on all of all of your questions. Thank you, Deidre. Thank you, Deidre. Um, no technological works. No video. No sound. That is a really critical thing that I need to clarify in the request for qualifications. What we found is so we you know we we all love tech, technological works, but. You know the you know what it takes in terms of staff time and effort to keep technological works well maintained in a very busy active um, environment where then we have we have technological artworks at the airports uh, one of which you know the whole computer system has to be gutted out and replaced and we have to replace all of the LED lightings uh, technology doesn't last forever and anything we do at the airport you know, w it needs to be built to last with minimal maintenance and interference. So and thank you, thank you for bringing that up. And and one more thing, I'm sorry to hog this. Uh, in terms of, um, I was looking at the the window wall. Uh, yes. Location. Uh, I am assume I am assuming then, given your previous response, that we cannot engage in the window wall. We're open to that. Now, you know if. When you say engage in the window wall, if that has anything to do with possibly like replacing window panels, no. Okay, that's never going to happen. No. <laughs> but if you, okay, yeah, just yeah, this, I could just I could feel the heart attack coming from my construction friend fr friend over here. If you have an idea and you want to engage that 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 window wall, go for it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Are you envisioning one artist or proposal group per location, or yeah. might multiple artists, multiple proposals get put into one location together? I, I, I envision uh, one artist or artist group per location. I mean, there are, there are areas in the airport where, the, where we've found some places that kind of function like galleries where we've acquired individual works of art and on walls have hung works by different artists together. That could happen. You know, um, I personally envision, you know, um, kind of, you know, one artist or artist team per wall to create kind of a bigger, like a much bigger kind of expression. Because the, the sp these particular spaces don't lend themselves well to a more of a gallery kind of feel. You know, we, we have other spaces in the airports that, that serve that function. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, constant changes at airports. Yes. So is there an 
anticipated duration and can you talk a little bit to the end of that duration? Yeah, um, okay, some, you know, some building projects, um, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time around construction projects. Sometimes with a building project, there's a requirement that the building should last with minimal maintenance for say 20 years or 30 years. You know, I look to my colleague over over here, and you know, we actually don't we actually don't have a number. That's why we ask that your artworks be movable. So let's say in 10 or 20 years, United decides to expand this term expand this terminal. You know, we'll be able to safely remove your work from the wall. They'll do the work they need to do, and then we'll relocate re we'll relocate the artwork. Does that make sense? Actually, um, the artwork, if, you know, once, um, once, your, once your artwork is complete and you've completed the terms of the contract, your artwork will be owned by uh, United, by United Airlines. There, um, there is discussion of possibly, you know, having those works go into the City of Houston Art Collection, but we, but we don't, yes. Okay. Okay, and then so once uh, so initially United will be the owner, and then Houston Airport System will be the owner. They will then be the owner, and will have the right to if the, to uh, move the work, to re to relocate the work, etc. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, hi, Sarah. Hey. Um, I just had a quick question about um, you know we talked a little bit about the you know the, the number of spaces. Do you have an idea? or maybe you don't have an idea just yet until you start getting the qualifications or, and, and going through the evaluation process, the number of artists you may be looking at for this, for this project. I don't know if you can speak to that. Yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm gonna answer that in two ways. One, based on the response we've gotten so far, we think this is gonna be you know, the largest number of applicants that Houston Arts Alliance has ever had for anything, mm -hmm. okay? So just, you know, all, everybody, everybody take a deep breath and remember that this is gonna be really competitive. Also take a deep breath and remember this is not the last civic art project on the planet in Houston. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a, we have a lot of plans for many more projects in Houston and many more projects at the, at the airport. If I were to get, if I were to guess, and again, this is gonna, this is a decision that I'll, so let me take let me take a b back up step just about the panel. All of the decisions about this project, including the number of artists and artwork locations, are going to be made by the panel. I am not a part of. I my job is to guide them, and and that's it. If I were to guess, I'm guessing that somewhere between 20 and 30 finalists will be will be chosen. And then that'll be called down into 15 or fewer locations. Now, I just want to say that is a flat-out guess. The, deci the decision will be with the panelists on how they want to handle that. Great, thank you. You're welcome. I love that we have so many questions today. This is great. Alex, just want to make sure there's one gentleman in the front row to get done. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for your presentation today. My pleasure. Uh, Getting back to the lighting, I'm concerned about like reflections because of I've, I've have experience in publicly displayed work and reflections from different types of lighting are is a problem a lot of times. Mm -hmm. uh, is that going to be totally up to the artist to come up with a solution, and or is that something that that's thought about, or or just to, you know any of your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would actually say that that is going to be a part of your project manage, you know, part of managing your project, you know, both designing the artwork and thinking about how the artwork is going to function in the existing environment, and that includes reflections. So at at this point, I would say we, we would we would let the artists saw, come up with the solution for that one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good morning. Um, has there been any already uh, ideas on a theme ab across the artwork or 
uh, is that quite agnostic at the moment, depending on what happens, or is it almost the opposite? Some some quite varied uh, pieces. It's currently it's it's agnostic at the moment. You know, look at look at what's written in the request for qualifications about the vision for the vision for the project. So you know we're. You know, I think the overarching vision is a world-class art collection for a world-class airport. So if I were to say, you know, in terms, of a, in terms of a curatorial vision or subject matter or materials, at this point it's completely agnostic. Okay? When it comes to um, sculpture. Yes. Um, do the sculpture need to be actually on the floor or can it be on a podium and do we provide the podium if so? If so, do we provide the podium or can we provide the podium? If the, art, the artwork could conceivably be on the floor, uh, I, I think the airport system would plan that it be on a podium or a plinth and that cost would be included in the artist's budget. Alex is getting her exercise today. <laughs> Anybody who needs a workout, just come do a presentation with me. Um, I had a follow-up question to his, his lighting one, just because um, doing works on paper, you're dealing with, again, like you said, about lighting. Um, do you need that kind of stuff in the letter of intent, talking about that? Or can we just discuss our ideas and then just if you get selected, go, I just don't want to spend time talking about that if I you can a moot point. You can go ahead, go ahead and discuss your ideas, but for, so if, for people who are working in say drawing or watercolor, it is, we're, we're never going to have a 100% controlled lighting situation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you do work that, you know, needs, where you need absolute control over the lighting for like the, the long-term health of the work, airports are not where you want to go. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Is that the natural lighting coming in? There's natural lighting come in, and there's just it's there's too many fat. You, you know, the ultimately the lighting at the airport is about the you know is a, is about the cust is about the customer. You know, we can we can mitigate for the artwork, but we're never going to be able to totally control the lighting. I mean, we can adjust the lighting on the artwork, but it'll never be really 100% controlled. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Uh, Hi. When you pro in your letter of intent, and if you uh, propose a piece of art, do you have to say, uh, because you have to uh, report the, the price, so you have to say, this is the price, and this will be designated to this piece of wall or that piece of wall, or you leave this to the decision of the panel or people sort of curate the whole airport. What you might do is, you know, say, you know, I envision that this work of art could work well on this wall, this wall, or this wall. You know, just to show that you've thought it through. And then ultimately locating the work will be up to the panel. Okay? Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, do we have to, as the artist, uh, be concerned with the weight of our pieces hanging on the wall. Have you guys thought about that or have any information if we're, for example, proposing like wall-hung sculptures or wall-hung murals that might be like heavy, a couple hundred pounds? Do we know about the weight bearingness of the walls? Uh, ben, ben, why don't you come? Why don't you come up and talk about the talk about the weight, the load? So again, that's something that we can we can look at. Um, if you have something that, that's going to require a heavy mount to the ceiling or heavy mount to the wall, that's something we can discuss. I guess to just put that in your in your proposal to HAA, and once we get to that point, that is something that we can we can implement if needed. Thanks, thanks, Ben. Uh, I have a question regarding the three professional references. Yes. Could you speak a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, what you want is. So to be perfectly honest, I generally don't call refer. I don't. I often. Let me take a step back. 
you know, I'll only be calling references for those who are making it into, you know, into the finalist, finalist category. You know, we want, we want references of, from people, you know, someone who I could call to, you know, find out about you, your work, you know, um, you know, if you have worked with somebody where you've worked under contract and delivered on time and under budget, great, include them as your reference, as your reference. You know, you want people who've, you know, actually worked with you as an artist in some, in some capacity. Say that again. Absolutely. Yeah, your, uh, your, your references can be from anywhere. Hi, uh, thanks for having me here. Um, quick question, are we limited uh, as artists to spaces that we um, will get approved for? Like I do multimedia pieces, so let's say I get approved for one piece and then I do a sculpture that also gets approved. Are they allowing that for artists or when they do choose their artists, is it limited one piece you know, per install for artists or, or can an artist have multiple pieces you know, again, that'll be entirely that'll be entirely up to the panel. Um, to, but to be totally honest, I doubt that would happen. It is a possibility, but I I think that the I think that the panel is going to want to spread the love. I have one question under the biography artist statement. Can it be a statement that it's made by someone that is familiar with your work? Is that what you want? It um, actually, you know, uh, I've seen people, so if I were to, like, so for example, if I were going to write my own biography, you know, Sarah Kellner was born in Buffalo, New York, and has lived in Houston since 1999. You know, um, I've seen people, you know, write their own bios. Maybe they quote somebody talking about their work. Okay. You know, that's, that's totally That's what fun. I wanted. That's okay. Yeah, if you want to, now... You know, I, I wouldn't have the whole thing be a quote because we really want to hear from you. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, when it comes to digital artworks, is the application of that work included in the budget? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the budget... The, the budgets for commissions are included, are intended to be soup to nuts. So if it was a digital artwork, you know, it would be printing, framing, mounting, installation, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. There seemed to be an implication that two of the spaces had a visual proximity to each other and should work together. And I was wondering we're sub if we're submitting as a team of artists, is, is there a potential for us to suggest that we would uh, do a partnering work in two of those spaces? Yes. I neglected any areas. You guys are aw you guys. This this is what we're here for. You guys are awesome with the questions. Are you allowed to submit as a group and as an individual? Hmm. Email me that question. That one. That one. I have to think about. Thank you. That's a, that's a good point. For the emailed questions, also say we can. We're gonna type up everyone's questions and answers from this meeting, and we'll post it online, and we'll include the answers to those questions that we get answered later um, on the Q and A online. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Questions? No. Anyone else? Any final questions? Oh, one uh, right up here, Alex. Hi, Eric. Um, I do have a quick question. It, it involves something that you had mentioned about the resume. Um, you said that you, I'm, I, I was taking some notes, but I think that you said you didn't know, you didn't want to know exactly what you had done, but you wanted to um, know who we were as an artist. Could you explain that a little bit more? You know, um, I think what I said about the resume is we don't want your work resume. We want your artistic resume. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does that you. make sense? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, 
a quick question on existing work. Let's say if we have some artwork that we did through like a collaboration, mm -hmm. uh, how does that apply to uh, submitting that work and our personal individual works? Is that like allowed? I know it's kind of similar to the other question. Yeah, you know, that one, I, I haven't had that question come up before, so I'm gonna have to think about it. I, I just need to think about it, you know, the implication of um, say an artist applying as a part of a collaborative and also applying as an individual. Um, I, I need to think about it and come up with an answer and then we'll post it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, you guys have stuck it out to the end. I want to thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for all of your questions. Uh, again, email us at civicart at haatx.com if you have any questions. Um, you know, we will, we will stop accepting questions on Thursday, January 3rd at 5.15. Um, as long as you get your question in by then, we'll answer it by the following day on Friday. Um, I'll be here for a few minutes in case there's something you want to ask me privately. Thank you all so much for coming today. We really, really, really appreciate your interest in this project with United Airlines. Thank you so much.